and I want to welcome you to the Master Gardener webinar today. I'm excited because I am your speaker and uh, we're going to talk about botanical gardens across uh, Florida. So I'm going to go ahead and click and get us going. So the name of the topic is Selected Botanical Gardens of Florida. And I probably will not have all of your gardens, uh, all of your favorites here, but let me tell you, in your Qualtrics form, when you close out of the webinar today, you will take takes you to the survey directly. I only have one question for you today, and that is what garden didn't I talk about in Florida that you want me to talk about? Because I'd like this to be a continuing topic for us to return to. So today we'll talk about selected botanical gardens, but probably next December, why don't we talk about demonstration gardens and kind of secret gardens that not everybody knows about. Um, sometimes these are garden club properties. Sometimes these are uh, properties that are part of the um, city or the county that I may not know about. So I think we would like to explore that a little bit more. All right, well, here we go. A garden is uh, not a place, it's a journey. And I think that a lot of us know that um, as we go through, we see beautiful uh, gardens, but uh, it's not, they're not built in one day. Um, they are a process uh, and it's a journey. And it's a journey when you go to a garden. So it's my hope today with these selected gardens that we're gonna be seeing that I'm gonna kind of inspire you to take a trip because even during the COVID lockdown and uh, social distancing and all of this stuff, you can usually still go to a botanical garden, be far apart from each other, be outside and learn and experience and enjoy. And my next slide, is a quote from Bill Klein, who was the director of the National Tropical Botanical Gardens. Um, he says, gardens are for growing people. You know, we have a lot of plants that we see, we have signage, we have amazing exhibits often, but the gardens are for um, uplifting you, educating you and expanding your horizons too. So I'm a, I have a little bit of a criteria today um, and I'm gonna break my own rules, of course, but a botanical garden is a garden dedicated to the collection, the cultivation, the preservation and display of a wide range of plants labeled with their botanical name. Okay, so it's a, it's the, the, these plants are labeled, it's a teaching opportunity. It's a way for us to see, um, and learn plants. And that is what a botanical garden is. And so some people will come into a beautiful garden and they'll say, oh, it's like a botanical garden. Well, if there really isn't any signage or ways to access that information that is being demonstrated there, then that's more of what we would call a display garden. And I do have one of those included for us today. So we are La Florida, we're the land of flowers. We probably have more botanical gardens than most states. And so I've organized this in as well uh, through our extension districts. So we're gonna look at the gardens of the Northwest, the Northeast, the central part of Florida, the Southwest, and then the South. So we're gonna start from the top down in no particular order. So let's get going. Uh, for the Northwest, we're gonna go ahead and start. And we are starting with Eden Gardens. Eden Gardens is a state park. Um, it is located in Point Washington, south of Freeport, Freeport, Florida, just off of 98 and County Road 395 in Northwest Florida uh, near Santa Rosa Beach. Okay. Um, it has 163 acres and you are uh, transported back in time with the beautiful wedding oak as they call it. And they have um, beautiful plantings, uh, tropical, uh, not tropical trails, but uh, woodland trails to experience and beautiful vistas. So this is the mansion um, that is on Tucker Bayou and um, Eden Gardens is a beautiful park, state park that you can visit and the master gardeners in the area are very active in, at these gardens. Our next one in the Northwest is Alfred B. McClay Gardens. And it is a show place of our spring bloomers. So azaleas, uh, camellias, and it is on a beautiful lake. Many acres are here. 
and it is um, the gardens were first planted in the early 20s by Alfred McClay as a spring retreat. The McClay house is still there. Peak blooming season is January through April, but every time I've gone and it's been beautiful with stunning displays has been in March. And I would recommend calling ahead to see when the peak bloom time is at McClay. And I have another shot here. Um, it's off of Thomasville Road, so it's very close to in town, to in Tallahassee. There's beautiful vistas. Um, there's a lot of interesting spring bloomers. I include the um, uh, little uh, the snowdrops there because uh, there's a beautiful uh, snow bells tree, and that's the one that's reminding me of that. And then last season, I went to McClay during their Scarecrow Festival which was fabulous. Um, and that is around the Halloween season. So there's many different opportunities at McClay Gardens. And there's some great shopping uh, for plants in Tallahassee at the Tallahassee Nursery or Natives Nursery. I'm doing a shameless plug for them. But they, um, so you can go to the Botanical Gardens and then also visit some fantastic destination nurseries as well. It's about 28 acres at McClay. Gardens of the Big Bend is located in Quincy, Florida at the North Florida Research and Education Center on IFAS property. And this is a beautiful garden just off of I-10 uh, I and it's in Quincy. And these gardens are a teaching garden and a botanical garden. And they have amazing collections of new plants and um, specifically magnolias and crepe myrtles are highlighted there. And Dr. Gary Knox and the friends of the Gardens of Big Bend do a terrific job. Um, and this is a before picture of their succulent hill. And then they went ahead and planted that. And I think my next picture shows the gorgeous succulents that they have growing. And it's quite stunning when it's uh, in bloom and in color. And there's the dickia there and the, um, the pad cactus there. And I think many of us know Dr. Gary Knox, who is the creator and um, leader of these gardens. So it is uh, quite beautiful. And um, it, given an opportunity, please go out and check out Gardens of the Big Bend. I do need to give you a, a scoop though. Um, Dr. Gary Knox, pictured here, will be doing a presentation in uh, June or July of 2022, it's actually in July, to the Master Gardener webinar, and he's going to really dive deep into all of the different plants and the opportunities that they have at the Gardens of the Big Ben in Quincy, Florida, located right next to our um, Extension Center there. All right, now let's look at some gardens in the Northeast. And our first one is the Cummer Museum of Art and Gardens. This is in downtown Jacksonville. And I include this bottom right-hand picture here because you can see the beautiful formal gardens that they have. And the gardens are right on the banks of the St. John's River. And there's a beautiful bridge very close. So you know you are definitely downtown. And the Cummer uh, was established in 1958, and the art collector there was also a garden enthusiast. So they have a, they consider it a 20th century garden, uh, where there's reflecting pools and ponds, and there's a beautiful oak tree called the Cummer Oak, uh, which is estimated to be close to 200 years old. So this is uh, definitely, you would go see the gardens, they are behind the museum, but you also would enjoy the museum itself. And there's beautiful um, exhibits there. So I would encourage you to call ahead and find an exhibit that meets uh, your needs for art museums. But this is a great one to definitely go see. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. The Cummer is gorgeous. They have a real flower art display. Is that still going on until January? And um, that I understand is fantastic. I need to get over there too. And they have a lovely cafe and a gift shop. Um, so, and I will be mentioning some of those too as we go along, but the Cummer is awesome. 
All right, next up we have the Kanapaha Botanical Gardens and the Kanapaha Botanical Gardens are located here in Gainesville, Florida, where I am from. And pictured here in this photo is the um, former garden um, director and the current garden director, Alexis uh, McCaffrey and her dad, Don Goodman. And they are busy measuring the Amazon or the Victoria water lilies that they have in. And this is one of the things that they are certainly noted for. They have a, a herb garden, a palm hammock, a rock garden, a woodland garden, an herb garden. And I have to tell you all that the herb garden at Kanapaha Botanical Gardens in Florida is one of the finest um, herb gardens that I have seen in the Southeast. The other thing that they have there is one of the largest bamboo collections in Florida, and it is really quite enchanting. And so you can see a little bit of the image of the bamboos here. This is a labyrinth that is used for peaceful uh, walking and meditation, but often I see children running around there having a fantastic time. They also have an excellent children's garden, a wonderful, wonderful butterfly garden. And there's quite a lot to see there. This is owned um, in conjunction, um, the Alachua County uh, owns the property and the Friends of the uh, North Florida Botanical Society uh, run this garden. And I have a picture of the Wakes uh, Trillium here. Uh, early in March, the Trillium bloom uh, and in their woodlands. And if you need to see a collection of Trilliums that really blows your socks off, Kanapaha is uh, one to see for sure. Oh, great, uh, great gift shop as well. And I believe my final for Northeast is Washington Oak State Park. And I'm not sure if I have the address. Yes, I do on the next one. This is in Palm Coast in Flagler County. So hello, Flagler County Master Gardeners, if you're there. This is a beautiful garden, um, including uh, azaleas, camellias, bird of paradise. The stream beds here are loaded with tropicals that you don't normally see this far north in Florida. Um, and they have some gorgeous oaks and a very small but very fine rose garden. And this is a picture of my daughter, Sophia, smelling the peace rose, which is uh, many of you know is one of my favorite roses. And the neat thing about Washington Oaks State Park, so it's a state park price, um, is that they have across the street, across A1A, are uh, a beautiful, not a collection, a beautiful occurrence of coquina rock right in the surf. So you can have kind of a beach exploration day as well as a botanical garden exploration day. And if you are bringing the fishermen in your life, um, they have excellent fishing on the intercoastal there as well. So this is a, a really interesting park to attend. There's a lot of great history there. Um, one of the former owners had put an orange grove and that, that kind of uh, got the garden started and the historic house is there as well. So, um, and they have a small little natural gift shop, which is great too. And there's a great history there that one of the owners was related to George Washington. So that's where the Washington Oaks come from and the Oaks are just gorgeous. All right. Oh, guys, I have to tell you this. Correct me if I'm wrong, Flagler County MGs, but the second Saturday of the month, they, the Friends of Washington Oak State Park have a cool plant sale. And there's not, uh, they have plants at this plant sale, second Saturday of the month in the morning, uh, plants that you can't usually find other places. I found a really rare red selaginella there that um, it's one of my favorite plants. And so this is a really neat, neat little plant sale that the Friends of puts on. All right. Heading down to Central Florida now as we scoot along. And of course, Central Florida, I'm going to mention Harry Lou P. Lou Gardens. Uh, Lou Gardens is a semi tropical uh, and tropical gardens in Orlando, Florida. They are also known for a large camellia collection and azalea collections. It's 50 acres preserved in downtown Orlando. There are 200 year old oak trees there that are quite stunning. Um, there's an amazing palm garden, uh, excellent collection of palms. And the bottom left-hand picture doesn't do it justice because you can't really do their rose garden justice, but their rose garden is close to an acre large 
uh, very formal roses with fountains and brick pavement and uh, little gazebos and a wedding area, which is nice. And one of my favorite things that they have there is their floral clock. So from the Rose Garden looking, I think south, you see this very large floral clock, which I think is fun. And they replant it every year with different annuals to make a quite a show. They have a real interesting tropical stream um, that is very neat. They've got tropical fruit, tropical gingers, tropical uh, orchids, bromeliads all tucked in the trees. So it's kind of a rainforest walk, um, all, uh, all very accessible. That is my mother in love posing with the Costa ginger there. And I do include the picture below with the cinder blocks and the herbs because they have a great the discovery garden there, which is a um, demonstration of what you could do around your house. So I always get really cool ideas and um, neat um, takeaways that you can take from the, the discovery uh, area there. And the director has been a speaker for us for several times um, at the conferences, uh, Robert Bowden. And if you catch Robert at the garden and you have questions, he's always so uh, agreeable and he will talk to you more about the gardens. And so it's always great to know that director and check in with Robert Bowden when you're there. Our next garden in Florida to discuss is the Bach Tower Gardens in Lake Wales, Florida. Um, it is a true treasure and um, Mr. Bach, um, who was a famous publisher, a true American success story, went ahead and donated this land and the money to keep it going for many years. Um, it started in 1929, pictured in the middle, they say is one of the most most common taken pictures in Florida, which is the singing carillion um, made of beautiful pink marble and gorgeous inlays. And this is a, uh, a bell that chimes in there and they play that. Uh, Alora asks, can people go into the tower? The answer, Alora, is yes, but you kind of have to be real special. <laughs> I've seen people coming, going in and out and then trying to um, get in, um, but the, I think you'd have to make special arrangements, but maybe. And there's actually someone who goes in and plays the carillion, and that plays in um, about every hour um, on the hour. And I include this picture here of this, these beautiful fern trees and my little friend Nora doing a backbend under one because um, I remember when I was about her age, about 11, seeing these fern trees. And this was before the freezes of the early 80s, so now you know how old I am. Um, and I was mystified. This was a real inspirational um, garden for me as a child. And I was awoken to the diversity of plant life uh, that is in the world. And I have to say that that happened at Bach Tower Gardens. Um, and they, um, uh, the Carillion's amazing, but the, another main important thing that happens at Bach Tower is um, they have a repository of conservation of our native plants. So they have amazing native plants there and it's the endangered plant garden provides a one of a kind opportunity to see Florida's rarest plants. And we're talking about 30 species of native plants that are in conservation at this garden. So if you're like, oh, I've been there, I've seen the tower, I've seen the camellias, the azaleas, I've seen it all. Uh, go and check out this native plant conservation area with these endemic, often threatened, often endangered plants that they are protecting there at uh, Bach Tower Garden. And um, Helen says that um, the uh, Christmas demonstrations uh, are beautiful there. And yes, so the, they really put on the, put on the display for Christmas. Uh, Therese Tiffer said, do they have plants um, for sale? And the answer, Therese, is yes. Um, you go through the actual gift shop, which is amazing. And then they have a little garden uh, center outside. And I've also gotten some really rare plants there. I got a black ginger there um, that I was pretty excited about finding. Um, fantastic. All right. 
So I told you I was going to break my rules. Um, I did want to mention Hollis Gardens in downtown Lakeland. This is not necessarily a botanical garden. This is something that I would call a display garden. And uh, this is right on one of the main lakes in downtown Lakeland. So if you haven't um, gone to visit Hollis Gardens, I would encourage you to do that. And then also for Central Florida, I did want to mention this because it's really neat. The UCF, University of Central Florida Arboretum is basically the whole campus. So all the trees are tagged and known on campus. And this helps to teach the students as they go through and learn about the trees. They are used in biology classes. They're used in, um, in um, as outdoor classrooms. So folks can go ahead and uh, tour UCF. They do have a great website and they do have a starting point where you can get a pamphlet and learn about all the trees that UCF has at the Arboretum. All right, now I know I probably skipped over some, but for the sake of time, I wanna make sure that we go, but that was it for Central Florida. And now I'd like to talk about uh, Southwest Florida. Starting with another university gardens, the gardens at USF. This is in Tampa. They have amazing teaching gardens, uh, 16 acres of gardens and 300 uh, or 3000 uh, plants and they attract visitors often all through the year. You don't have to be a student to visit this garden. And the, um, they do have wonderful plant sales here. So if you have an opportunity to check out USF Garden in Tampa, I would highly recommend it. It's always changing because the students are doing different things and they do use the courses for biology and even engineering. Um, so USF has a great uh, garden on their campus. So here's a garden that's near and dear to our heart in Largo, Florida, the Florida Botanical Gardens. And the Florida Botanical Gardens are um, touched up right next to the uh, Pinellas County Extension Office. There's a way for you to enter the gardens there. These are, um, are developed and maintained by the Park and Conservation Resources. And there is a formal wedding garden. There is a uh, fruit garden. There is a... a kitchen garden, they have many different garden rooms and they have uh, fantastic demonstrations there. But one of our favorite demonstrations that they put on are their Christmas lights. So I wanted to in, uh, include this photo because the lights that they have there in um, downtown Largo or not downtown, but off uh, in the main, main part of Largo are, is a real Christmas destination. And so check with your botanical gardens because many, many of them are putting on Christmas displays now. And that is a great way if you have guests or visitors to stay in that holiday spirit and get out and see the lights or the poinsettias or the different, um, different beautiful um, Christmas displays that you can see. All right. Also, uh, Florida Botanical Gardens are um, many times um, the master gardeners in Pinellas County do their hours there. So there's some great master gardener activities going. I include Sunken Gardens in downtown St. Pete. Some of these um, um, started, some of our gardens started as like roadside or tourist attractions and Sunken Gardens would definitely be one of those. There's a um, um, meandering paths, a uh, hundred year old sunken gardens. So they started in 1911, I believe. So they're more than a hundred years old and they have beautiful tropical plants, wonderful vistas. And these, because it was a tourist attraction, they still have the flamingos. So if you wanted to see a flamingo, and that's something that's attractive to you, uh, there are still flamingos there. So this is a small garden, very easy to do in a, uh, an hour. It's only 4.5 acres, um, but it's a great show. And if you're visiting St. Pete, I would encourage you to see Sunken Gardens there as well. So there's Sunken Gardens St. Pete, and there's also Sunken Gardens Sarasota. So there are two Sunken Gardens on the West Coast. Of course, we have to talk about Marie Selby Botanical Gardens. Uh, this is in Sarasota. And Marie Selby has at least 13,000 um, amazing 
epiphytes. They are known for their collections of bromeliads, orchids, and jesneriads. And jesneriads is the uh, African violet family. They have over 5,000 species um, and they have um, uh, 1,200 um, genera from 200 plant families. So it's very well represented. This is a very serious botanical garden that has, is currently doing research and conservation work. Um, their website is fantastic to check out. So I would encourage you to do so. Um, they believe they claim to have the most um, epiphytes uh, under glass in greenhouses, um, definitely um, a very important collection that we house here in Florida. They really have two sites, but the main site is um, right there in Sarasota. And may I tell you that their bookstore and their gift shop is excellent. Um, and they often play host to events. So the last time I was there was an Asian festival where they had Asian displays of plants, but they also had um, food trucks and different um, cultural experiences that you could have around that. So it's a good idea to check with your botanical garden before you visit or check their calendar to see what kind of events are going on because you never know what you're gonna be able to luck into because botanical gardens are very important as an access point for those types of events in your community. Another garden in the Southwest is Echo Gardens. Um, Echo Gardens is a demonstration of edible plants and food and basically agroecology um, or permaculture. And I really like Echo's mission, which is to teach people across the globe how to grow their own food and um, not um, be hungry. So their mission is basically um, empowering the undernourished with sustainable hunger solutions. So their Fort Myers garden is trialing different types of plants that they can bring to across their set, uh, areas in the world to um, help people from starving. And um, so uh, there's some really great things to see there. They have animals, they have, uh, so they have goats and they have chickens uh, and they kind of incorporate all of that together. But I really enjoy this photo here of the bananas with the perennial peanut planted below because they're using cover crops, a legume that's uh, uh, working underneath the bananas. Um, so there's so much to see there. And if you are looking for a hard to find seed of an edible, their gift shop and bookstore might have it. So if, if that's something um, that you may check into or look at. Let me see what the chat's doing. Um, yes, so Noreen wanted to recommend that Selby uh, acquired Spanish Point and Osprey. Yes, yes, thank you very much. All right, good job. So um, Echo Gardens, you do pay for admission. I would recommend that you get a make a reservation. And this is a great field trip. If you Master Gardeners uh, tour coordinators are on here, think about going to Echo Gardens as a field trip. It's just excellent. And while you're down there, might as well go and see the Edison and Ford Museum and Winter Estates Garden in Fort Myers. And I have to include their iconic bamboo trees. Uh, these are beautiful gardens that are right on the water um, in Fort Myers down um, uh, McGregor uh, Parkway there. And the, I understand that one of the banyans took a hit during uh, one of our recent storms, but hopefully we know how banyans grow, so they probably are back in action. And one of the things that Edison uh, was working with Ford and also Firestone down there was looking for a rubber alternative before synthetic rubbers came. So they have many, many different ficus trees or other trees that produce latex um, because they were gonna think about how to make more rubber. So Edison, always the inventor. And I would encourage you to head down there. And if you haven't been to the Edison Museum, um, it's quite stunning to learn how prolific this um, one of our American inventors was. So I'm gonna spend a little time on the Naples Botanical Garden, if you all don't mind. 
um, I have been encouraged probably for the last five years. Oh, you got to go to the Naples Botanical Garden. You got to go to Naples Botanical Garden. I was like, oh yeah, okay, I'll get down there. Well, I wish I had gone earlier because it was really a fantastic garden. It's a newer garden started in 1993. Um, with generous uh, contributions from a few families um, in and around the Naples area. And they have this garden so chock full of plants, uh, stunning uh, exhibits, stunning specimens. So I really encourage you to check out Naples Botanical. And um, you walk into basically a rainforest with beautiful ponds and incredible tropicals. And once you um, clear the visitor center, you are, your eyes are feasted by a beautiful water uh, garden uh, with, uh, with the beautiful Victoria lilies and many, many water lilies. And um, it's, it's quite stunning. Raymond Jungles, um, one of our landscape designers from the South Florida area was very instrumental in this portion of the garden and you can see his handiwork here and um, this was one of my photos that I took from the top so when you're uh, exploring the gardens here uh, you're able to walk around the back side of that mural and see um, and see excuse me the water lilies at the top um, this is in the Brazil garden. They have arranged their gardens by region. So we have the Brazil garden, we have the Caribbean garden, they have the Asian garden, they have the Florida garden, and then they have um, some other land used uh, in conservation as well. And one of the things that I noticed that they, we were, when I was there that they do a great job of incorporating art um, and sculpture in the gardens and look at that beautiful uh, tropical day that we're experiencing. And then they had these uh, tubs all over the place. And I asked our guide, what are, what's up with all these uh, uh, water tubs? And they were a actually a demonstration uh, and a competition site for the Water Lily Association or Water Lily Society, International Water Lily Society. So that's what was going on there. This picture here shows a long view of all Florida uh, native plants or many Florida native plants down a native stream and uh, one of our iconic chicky huts at the top that is used for um, teaching. And then they also have a enabling garden there which was um, showed um, a lot of uh, different accesses um, and a touching garden for the visually impaired, et cetera. And it was um, Kathleen and Scott Kapnick that made their generous dis um, uh, donation to get this garden started. But I also like this piece here of a, a labyrinth garden. So Naples Botanical Garden is really, up and coming to be one of our main showcase gardens here in Florida. And it's, it's quite, quite impressive. So I would encourage you all to check that out. They have a great, um, yeah, I don't know how they circulate the water in tubs. I'm, I'm sure that they had it moving though, Kathy. Um, Nikki, I don't know if it was originally Jungle Larry's or not. I'm not, I'm not sure on that. I, I think it was all new land. That's the impression I got. Okay, now for the South Gardens. Um, you know, in, um, in our extension districts, our South starts pretty high up. So our first one is McKee Botanical Gardens in the Vero Beach area. And um, McKee Gardens is a beautiful um, tropical garden, that beautiful displays of orchids, bromeliads, uh, rare palms and cycads. And here's a picture of the long house that they used to have there. And this is a giant table, uh, one of the largest uh, tables they say in Florida. And I guess when the Vero, uh, when Vero played host to the uh, Dodgers, uh, the baseball team would come sit at this table to eat. And I wanted to include this um, image that I took at McKee Botanical Gardens. Um, and this is the, uh, their grove of royal palms or Cuban royal palms. But here is the stick work um, that you sim sometimes see and exhibits. And this, the artist of this stick work is Patrick Doherty. And um, this is an, a display. So. Sometimes you'll go to a garden or you'll find out when this is happening. Um, 
they are paying for an, a complimentary exhibit to occur in the garden. So I've seen giant um, bamboo insects. I've seen um, chihuly glass. Uh, we've seen the stick work from um, Patrick Doherty. And I just wanted to let you know that Naples Botanical Garden is hosting this exhibit that was at McGee, but now is at Naples, uh, the stick work there. So I'm excited to go down to Naples and see um, what kind of displays they had there. But this is all organic, um, all twisted and sculpted, and it looks beautiful in a botanical garden. And Vicki saw stick work at Naples, so it's up and running at Naples. You should, if you're gonna plan to go into Naples Botanical, try to get down there and see the stick work. All right, also in um, uh, South, uh, South Florida in Fort Peace, Pierce is the Heathcote Botanical Gardens. And they have an assortment of specialty gardens, including Japanese garden, a reflection garden, an herb garden, rainforest display, and a palm and side catwalk. Uh, this is a garden that's about five acres large, and they have a specimen of a triple-headed sable palm. So we used to have one of these at Kanapaha Gardens and one of the hurricanes broken up, but if you wanna see a triple-headed sable palm, Heathcote Botanical has it. So I'm hoping it's still well and doing well. And our um, St. Lucie uh, Master Gardeners um, work in the Heathcote uh, botanical gardens down there. So you may bump into one of your fellow master gardeners and they have a beautiful holiday display as well going on. Okay, another one of ours that's near and dear to our hearts is the Mounts Botanical Garden located um, in Palm Beach, Florida, Palm Beach County, right next to the County Extension Office. It totals eight, uh, 14 acres now, and they have many different rooms as well. Uh, they have a dry stream bed, they have a tropical foliage border, they have gorgeous tropical flowering trees, they have um, uh, rose and fragrance garden. And one of the things that I loved when I first went there is that they had an awesome composting display. So if you know me, you know I love composting. They have a, um, sorry, I'll get back there. They have a, um, a medicinal garden and um, so much to see. And one of my favorite plants that they have there is the golden chalice vine, but they have a variegated golden chalice vine, which I had never seen before. And one of the last time I was there, their silk floss tree was in full bloom. And I think I included this in Wendy's Wanderings recently, but this was a stunning, uh, a stunning display as well. So there's lots to see at Mounts Botanical and they have a friends of society, but often the master gardeners are there as well from Palm Beach County. A real garden treasure that I have discovered, hold on, let me check the chat with you guys. I'm gonna check in with you. Okay, uh, Okay. Nikki's got it. We've got a double palm at KBG. Uh, great plant sales at Heathcote. And yes, Diane, I know Port St. Lucie Botanical is small, but I'm going to cover that in my next Botanical Gardens uh, talk. So a, a garden that I've been uh, really enamored with um, recently in my brain is the Ann Norton Botanical Garden. It's at Ann Norton Museum and Botanical Garden in West Palm Beach, uh, basically in hustly bustly Palm Beach, right on the water. It's located in the El Cid neighborhood. Um, the garden has over 250 rare palm species, cycads and unusual tropicals. And these stunning, stunning sculptures um, that were done in the early part of the last century in the 20s and the 30s of the last century. So this was the um, second wife of uh, an important art collector. And most of these sculptures were done in situ. They were done right there at the garden. So it's a mixture of art and garden together. And this was a, a very um, a beautiful garden. Um, they're closed during the summer, so you have to go during the cool months. But the um, Ann Norton Botanical Garden is highly recommended and they have um, very rare palms there. So if you're a palm person, you're into uh, rare, threatened or endangered palms, a uh, beautiful collection there at the Ann Norton Botanical Garden. So jump for joy, I am including Pan's Garden in Palm Beach. Uh, Pan's Garden was uh, uh, 
built around this beautiful pan sculpture. And it is a small garden, but it is exclusively native plants, shrubs, and wildflowers, many of which are also endangered. So if in your mind you're like, well, why isn't there a garden that's dedicated just to the native plants and put in in a beautiful display, Pan's Garden is it. Um, they have uplands, they have wetlands, and they show how they occur together. So they really have beautiful plants, wildflowers, trees, and shrubs that are 100% native, and they are dedicated to that at Pan's Garden. So I would really encourage you. It's not a big, uh, it's not a big garden, but I feel like it's a very important garden uh, in this regard, and it is um, right there in Palm Beach. And it is uh, from the Preservation Foundation of Palm Beach. So that's Pan's Garden. Okay. Great. Um, so the next garden I wanna mention um, is the Murakami Museum and Japanese Garden. Uh, the Murakami, this is in Delray Beach, Florida. It is beautiful. Um, I went on a February day, so you can see the clear blue skies, and they also have amazing events that occur there. Um, beautiful views of lakes, bone size, well sculpted um, trees and prune trees. They have a great um, a tea house where they have a tea ceremony and they're redoing that right now. The garden itself is named Rojien. And that is Japanese for garden of drop, the drops of dew garden. And so I feel like that's so poetic, drops of dew garden. So it is a true Japanese garden, not necessarily a true botanical garden, but a Japanese garden and a fabulous display of that. Um, the designer is Hochi Kurisu, who is a very famous Japanese garden designer. And while I was there, Recently, I was lucky enough to see the Zen Garden raking. And this is, I think it starts at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock on the weekends. Um, it's included in your package. So you go to the, what they call the late garden, which is in the back and they line you up. And um, I, I thought they were just gonna show us how to rake the leaves in wavy lines and not step uh, and, and how to do it without leaving footsteps. And actually what we experienced was a whole um, self-awareness and a meditation uh, experience. And because that is what is occurring when that raking is going on. And so we, were, we had a mindfulness experience while we were there at the Murakami uh, at the raking uh, of the Zen garden in the back. So this was, this was a beautiful uh, experience for me. And I would encourage you um, to engage to have this experience while you're there. And if the tea ceremony is available as well to go check that out. Okay, all right. So Joe said, um, will you post or send us a list of all the gardens you talked about? Yes, I am gonna post a list and I'll, I'll put that up with, the, um, with the, the webinar. Okay, our next one to talk about is Butterfly World. Now, don't bust on me too bad because I know that this is a, pay, a paid for go and look at butterflies, uh, but the, it's one of the largest butterfly collections that you can see. Um, the, house, the facility houses over 20,000 live butterflies. And I include it in our botanical gardens because they have two very important collections. They have an amazing collection of Passiflora. So they have many, many species of passion vine. And those are all labeled. So you can see all the different passion vines at once. And then they also have an important collection of Aristolochia or the pipe vines. And you can see all of those at once. So when we were there, uh, most recently, um, the uh, purple bridal veil was blooming, and that's the Petria volubilis, uh, and it was just stunning. And they have many different butterflies uh, that you don't normally see in, um, in different butterfly exhibits, but most of the plants are labeled, and definitely that Passiflora and Aristolochia collection is labeled and very, very educational. 
And these are two bird wings that were getting uh, friendly while we were there. And I never saw these butterflies before, let alone mating. So I thought that was pretty neat. They're not native, they're from, uh, from uh, an exotic location, but I thought those were cool. Okay, I did want to mention too, as we're moving uh, further south, uh, Bonnet House Museum and Garden and the Broward County Master Gardeners uh, have been uh, volunteering there for years as well. Um, what is neat about the Bonnet House is that there's the, the, the preservation of the historic home for sure. Um, Hugh Taylor Birch was um, the, the developer of this area. And but the so the house is significant, but the grounds encompass some of the last examples of South Florida's native barrier island habitat. So they have um, dune habitat, freshwater slough, secondary slough. So you can see a lot of that preserved, as well as gorgeous tropical uh, foliage. And they play host to an orchid festival once a year. So that might be worth looking into as well. So you think you're in the beach district of Fort Lauderdale, hustly bustly, and then you can slip into this beautiful garden right off of Birch Road. So it's basically on sunrise in A1A and it's just a, a fantastic oasis uh, in that urban environment. Also in Broward County are Flamingo Gardens. Uh, and these were started uh, in the 20s, kind of in that roadside attraction, touristy event. They have a little tram that they pull you around in. They have photo opportunities with giant fake flamingos. But I will tell you that they have excellent labeled plants. They have fantastic examples of uh, anthuriums, begonias, um, other tropicals, heliconias, alocasias, uh, as well as big trees, gorgeous canopy, and they still have the flamingos. Um, so it is neat, but this, these were started a um, long time ago in the early 20s as a tropical fruit and citrus test area. And then they figured, oh, we can get more people in by having um, a tropical garden for them to see too. And this is still remains uh, to be a very popular garden. The last time I went, the parking lot was full and the overlot parking lot was full and people were parking on the side of the street. So this is in Davie, Florida and a really good, um, really good opportunity to see a lot of tropical foliage in Broward County. Okay, I think we're going a little further south now uh, to Vizcaya Museum and Gardens. And Vizcaya is right on Key Biscayne, a little bit north of uh, Coconut Grove on your way into downtown Miami. And Vizcaya was the um, home of John Deering, uh, and he basically recreated an Italian village right there in Miami. And this is a garden that I have visited uh, many times as a child as well as an adult. And these are very formal um, gardens like you would see in England and in France, very well clipped, very uh, well maintained. Um, but with our own South Florida flair, with our gorgeous bromeliads, and they are well known for um, their orchids as well. So when visiting uh, Vizcaya Museum and Gardens, um, I like to go see the gardens first and then go tour the house. So that way I can cool down afterwards. But this is quite, if you're down in Miami, I would highly encourage you to um, stop into uh, the gardens there and just be wowed and inspired because I think we can take messages and inspirations from a large grand scale garden like that and bring them into our home as well. So lots of, uh, this is the, the golden age. Oh, Gail Guild, thank you for reminding me. There is a beautiful um, cafe there, a nice cafe. And there are large lizards now because we, we have iguanas everywhere and big lizards running around Florida. Okay, so our next one to talk about is Fairchild Tropical Garden. Uh, Fairchild Tropical Garden is located in Coral Gables, Florida. It says uh, to be home to our only uh, tropical rainforest in the continental US. I think that's a little arguable, but that's fine. Um, you can see these gorgeous long vistas um, with palms and lakes and pandanus. Um, and this is, um, these were designed by 
Lyman Phillips, who worked with um, the Olmsted brothers, and um, this was the Frederick uh, Law Olmsted who designed also the Bach Tower Gardens, uh, Junior, by the way. Um, so he was from the same, um, same firm um, uh, Phillips was, and so you can see beautiful, uh, long-reaching vistas, lots of water, but what's really important, of course, this was developed by um, Montgomery and um, named for David Fairchild, our famous world plan explorer. Very important collections of cycads as well as important collections of palms. So if you're into cycads and palms, this is an amazing uh, garden for you there. My favorite spot, well, I don't have a favorite spot at Fairchild, but one of my favorite spots is the Rare Plant House. And the Rare Plant House has plants that, uh, that you have to travel much further south uh, to the equator to see, and you would have to travel the world to find these plants. So um, tropical, uh, Fairchild Tropical Gardens also has a tram that you can go around on. And so if you don't feel like walking the extensive 83 acres, um, you could also um, go on a tram. They host um, uh, several events. Uh, one of my favorites is the Mango Festival, which is held uh, in, the, in the summer. Um, they also have different festivals. I even think they have a chocolate festival. So this is one of our more expensive gardens to go to. And um, so that's a, that's a consideration to make, but Vizcaya, Fairchild Tropical Gardens should definitely be on your Miami list. And next, um, oh, I did want to show you. Oh, my picture of Chihuly glass didn't come out so well, but the um, Fairchild has great Chihuly glass exhibits. Many of these are permanent there. So, um, so that is something to go see if you are into the Chihuly glass. And this is the footprint of one of the giant baobab trees. And I remember as a child thinking, I can't imagine a tree that is so huge. I should have somebody in there for scale. Um, but the uh, the baobabs are quite enchanting on your walk to see the succulent gardens. They have an elaborate vine pergola, which is beautiful. Um, they have just so much to see, uh, and their butterfly house is really quite excellent as well. Let me see what's going on in the chat box. Yes, thank you, Profish. Uh, uh, oh, there's a statue of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Oh, thank you, Clara, for saying that. And Elizabeth said hurricanes thinned out the canopy at Fairchild. It most certainly did. Um, so, but one of the neat things that they did after one of the bad hurricanes, I uh, can't remember which one it was. I think it was Wilma. Um, the, uh, one of their large trees went down and they left it because they wanted to see what would happen um, to what happens after a storm, what happens to the plants, how do they regenerate? So I thought that was kind of an inspired, uh, inspired idea there. And someone else says they have great festivals there. And this is the lawn here right in front of the visitor center um, where, the, um, where the festivals occur. Thank you, Nikki. They did that after Andrew also. Maybe it was in, after Andrew. So home to um, David Fairchild is just up the road on Douglas Road uh, is the Kampong. And the Kampong is, was where David Fairchild and his wife, Marion, lived. Um, the first settlers of that property was Jack Peacock. Um, Peacock Park uh, in Coconut Grove is named for him. But then the land changed hands and it went to David Fairchild and he modeled it after Kampong means Malaysian village. So it is very, has a lot of Malaysian influences. His home was there, but in a great um, sampling of tropical fruit in the front and in the back, just a excellent tropical foliage everywhere. There's swimming pools Pool. There's a wonderful lawn for events. And then if you can see where this bench is in this photo, that bench is facing Biscayne Bay. So gorgeous bay views. And you can see uh, downtown Miami from there as well. So very much an enchanting place. Um, you have to make reservations. It's part of the National Tropical Botanical Garden now. So the Kampong is the mainland um, garden for the National Tropical Botanical Garden. And the other three locations are located on Hawaii one of which I got to visit last week. So uh, pretty neat. Uh, Kampong is 
used to be much harder to get into to okay elizabeth says you don't need don't you need reservations to go there yes i mentioned that you need reservations to go to the campong you have to call ahead you cannot waltz in they will run you out um so yep the campong is real special and you do need reservations all right, moving a little bit further south uh, to include the Key West Botanical Garden. It's called the Key West Tropical Forest and Botanical Garden. And this is a beautiful garden. Um, it's the only frost-free botanical garden in the continental US. Um, they have a lot of threatened and endangered flora there. And they really advocate the importance of native plants. And they um, have a lot of signage to back that up. They have uh, freshwater ponds, which are kind of hard to come by in Key West. So they are an important migratory bird um, stopping off there. And they have uh, the, endangered uh, palms there. The Cuban endangered palms are um, in safe uh, keeping at Key West and they also have two lollipop palms which are also quite rare and that's the uh, hemithrinax, uh, something to think about. And um, so the this is a really nice spot. It's much larger than you would anticipate um, for how um, land uh, scarce they are in the Keys. So this is out on Stock Island, the Key West Botanical Gardens and the Master Gardeners um, help them too. So Rosie quit reading my mind because the Key West uh, Garden Club, uh, West Martello Gardens and Fort has an amazing collection of tropical and native plants. Um, they have orchids and butterfly gardens, lush tropical foliage, and um, admission to this garden is free. So I would encourage you to visit the West Martello Gardens and Fort. This fort was really important during the Civil War. Uh, I didn't know this until I went there uh, to learn that the key, the key West was the only city that allied with the Union during the Civil War. So they have um, great, uh, great plants here and great history to visit as well when you're down in the Keys. All right, well, we're wrapping up, getting close to two o'clock. So I'm gonna wrap up with my, uh, I'm gonna call it my spark garden, the garden where I got my start, my spot, uh, the Redland Fruit and Spice Park. So we're coming back up from the Keys in the Redland um, in Homestead, Florida, which is, I think you all know that I grew up uh, down there. And this literally was my playground. Um, and um, so they have many beautiful um, tropical fruit trees. Um, they have uh, spice trees, but the, one of the most important things that happens at the Preston Bee Bird and Mary Heinlein Fruit and Spice Park um, is that they always have tastings available. And they have a big table in the gift shop, which is right here where it says park entrance. And they have a table where they'll have everything that's in fruit in the garden they have on that table for you to taste. So you really get to experience it so nicely. And um, you never know what you're going to find. They've got a really cool uh, little bookshop in there. And they are also host to uh, the Orchid Festival. One of our great orchid festivals in the state is held there, as well as a couple of other um, festivals that they have. And um, yeah, this is a great garden. They have a, a cafe there called the Mango Cafe. So if you visit this garden, you're going about a half a mile from where I grew up. We would ride bikes down there and uh, and look at plants and and maybe eat something uh, here a time or two. Go have some tropical fruit if we could. And let me check in. Uh, Clara says, Robert is here in a fun place to grab a tropical smoothie after the Redland Fruit and Spice Park. Here, here, I couldn't agree more. And Clara, I'm gonna tell you something funny. So the first time I brought uh, my Totally Hot Boyfriend to uh, Robert is here, there was a huge line at the smoothie shack, you know, so maybe like 30 people deep. And I was like, okay, honey, you park the car and I'm gonna go get us smoothies. What flavor do you want? And he said, I want a chocolate. And I'm like, no, you didn't understand. There's so many different tropical fruits to choose from. I'll pick one for you. So that's funny. Um, Elizabeth Morris, how about a shout out for the UF Butterfly Garden uh, at the Museum of Natural History? Well, I think I would um, do that, but they don't have any of their plants labeled. <laughs> so they have... Um, 
they have the, I wouldn't consider that a bot botanical garden, but I would include that in my next garden that will uh, next talk on gardens that'll be more about demonstration and display gardens because that is. But um, oh, Paulette, don't tempt me with those sticky buns from Nels Berry Farm. Okay. Um, so I want to um, wrap us up here by saying um, the I took inspiration uh, for this talk um, from a book called Guide to the Gardens of Florida by Lily Pincus. Uh, she was a friend of my mom's and uh, I remember when she was writing this book. It's a, it's a little bit older. Uh, Naples Botanical Garden isn't even in this, so you know it was done before the 90s. Uh, but so uh, this book is a, a nice source for you, but I also want you to think before you go to the gardens, think about events, uh, call them and kind of plan around the events because it's wonderful. Uh, think about are they having any classes or demonstrations that you could attend uh, because you want to have that full experience, give yourself that time and experience. Call ahead to see what the ADA is. Um, some of the gardens uh, say that they are very accessible, um, but then when you get there, the paths are gravel. Um, so it may not be as easy to walk as you had thought. Um, if you like to bring dogs, not all parks uh, take dogs. So you do definitely wanna check on that. And some of these gardens are closed on weird days. So like Kanapaha Botanical Garden closed on Thursday. Um, and Murakami closed on Monday. A lot of museums are closed on Monday, but so you wanna call and make sure um, that they're open, okay? Um, check for discounts, uh, whether senior discounts, AA, uh, AARP discounts, uh, AA, uh, AA discounts, so check on that. And then sometimes if you have a lot of, um, a lot of people going, um, it might make more sense to do a membership. So Rita Law, um, said, you, you may think about getting your membership to some of these things because um, it may be worth it if you're going to go back a couple times, it could definitely pay for it yourself. Um, great. So thank you to everyone. Oh, I appreciate it. Happy holidays to you too. Um, I hope you had fun. And I really appreciate all that you do. Yes, Chris Daniels, I'm ready to go on the road too. Thank you. And let's get out there and go see these beautiful gems that we have. Uh, people come from all over the world to see our gardens here in Florida, and uh, we have them in our own backyard. Yes, Debbie, I am thinking about updating that book. I'm going to do it. Let's do it. Um, and thank you all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And I hope that you um, I hope you have a great holiday and, and grow a lot of plants and give a lot of plants. Uh, I really look forward to working with you in January and the, in 2022. So we'll get that updated list of uh, new webinars. We've got some fantastic topics. I'm gonna mail that out to everybody so you can register for those webinars um, as soon as possible. And okay, uh, ja Janet March, who is an awesome volunteer says, Kanapa has, has reciprocal to Heathcote and Bach Tower. Love you too, Marty. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate it. We will see you next time. Take that survey so I can find out about your secret gardens and your demonstration gardens that you like to. All right. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone.